Good morning. I'd like to call the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners meeting to order for Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022. I'd like to welcome everybody here this morning. I will say that it is special to uh, have the swearing in ceremony uh, before this meeting. And, uh, and Charles and uh, Judge Boatwright, thank you for their efforts and all the supervisor elections uh, team. And thank you for everybody for coming and for the candidates, all the candidates who ran uh, and for the candidates who got elected, um, we wish them all well. Uh, I want to welcome our new commissioner from District 2, Ms. Leota Wilkinson. Uh, and um, look forward to working you uh, for the next uh, number of years. So uh, we'll begin uh, our meeting today by asking Pastor Don Helms with the Branch Community Church to come forward to deliver our invocation. And Commissioner Adams Act will lead us in the pledge. Please stand if you're able. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, I am uh, very grateful for the gospel this morning. I'm grateful for the good news that Jesus loved me when I had a lot of reasons not to be loved. And I'm grateful for his death and his resurrection. And so I pray for the business of this meeting and all future meetings, that the decisions that are made uh, would create a culture and a dynamic in our community that families and churches and all gospel ministry could flourish all across this, uh, this county. And so I pray for the, the commissioners and I pray for all the political leaders that stand before me right now. I pray that you would guide them and direct them and give them wisdom and discernment as they provide leadership and direction in representing the individuals in our community. And so, Lord, I just pray for your special blessing on the rest of this meeting. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Helms, and thank you, Commissioner Adams Act. Uh, commissioners, as you see on our agenda, the first item of business is approval of the minutes. Mr. Presented. Chairman, I move approval of the minutes stated in our agenda. We've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey, proper second by Commissioner Adams Act. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, uh, item three. Uh, this is the meeting uh, where once a year we elect a new chairman and a new vice chair. So we'll move into that section of our agenda. And I'll ask uh, County Administrator Terry Suggs to come forward. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners. How are y'all doing this morning? It's good to be here. Please bear with me with my voice this morning. We are getting over that bug that everybody seems to have caught the last couple of weeks. So. Uh, uh, so uh, if, we're, if the good Lord's will in here this morning, we'll get through this. As you know, this is the meeting that we do elect a new chair, a vice chair. But before we do that, if I could take a moment and a, uh, a privilege of the administrator to say a few things about our current and our outgoing chair. You know, every year we do this. And every year I get the privilege of standing here in front of the Board of County Commissioners and talking about an individual in his past year or her past year of leadership. And this is no different. This year I get to talk about the leadership of Chairman Bill Pickens. This year, Mr. Pickens, we've been a lot of change. You know, we had Commissioner Turner sat through the, the year of COVID, which no one ever wants to go through that again. You know, and this year we went through two named storms, Ian and Nicole. And uh, leadership is what you bring to the table when it is that we need a guidance and assistance making decisions for our citizens and our community at any given moment. And your availability, sir, this year was second to none. Uh, you have joined us on our Monday morning meetings, turned into pre-agenda meetings. You know, would not a lot of everybody, folks know this, but everybody needs to know this, that every Monday, Chairman Pickens showed up at 9 o'clock here at the Board of County Commission office and sat with his management team, and we sat the agenda. And those monies that we didn't have pre-agenda meetings, he sat with us and we went through the agenda and we went through projects. So your leadership, sir, is absolutely paramount to the success we've had this year. Thank you for that. You also sit absolutely. Thank you. 
it's, it's difficult when you, when you run a full-time business and you make yourself self available to, to your staff for what you've done this year, not only with our pre-agenda meetings on Monday, but with SHIP and AHAC. Uh, those meetings have been sometimes long, uh, arduous, but they've been great meetings, and your leadership as chairs is the reason for that. You said that's the chair of the Park and Recs uh, Committee. Again, another Monday afternoon meeting that you bring yourself up here for every day. We can't thank you enough for your availability. And for the time that you spent with us at the EOC, you know, during the storms, I hope that it was uh, enlightening, and I hope that, that uh, you understand the process of what it is that we do there because it is a full-time 24-hour service once we get in a, into that mode and we activate our EOC. You know, and we got great leadership at the EOC with, with Director Grimes and his staff, Chief Hutchison and Ms. Gee. You can't ask for a better staff out there. You know, and, and Danny and, and Stefan have done a wonderful job out there. You know, but just having you in the room and having you present there meant a lot to us, and we appreciate that very much. You know, I remember this is our second stint together, sir. Uh, you did this four years ago, and you and I had a lot of conversations. And they always usually start out with a text message that goes, hey, do you have a minute? And, uh, you know, those will come in the mornings, those will come in the evenings, those will come on the weekends, it doesn't matter. You know, because one thing about Chairman Pickens is when he's got a question, he's going to find out the answer. And, uh, and, and Chairman, uh, communication has always been one of those things that we are proud of, and we thank you for taking that opportunity to, to be a part of that and to reach out to us whenever you needed something and ask the question. It's, uh, that's, how we, that's how we find solutions to problems, so thank you for that. But I want to finish this by giving a quote, and it's not a quote of anyone in particular. It's just something you and I talked about four years ago. More than once, you and I had a conversation, and things were, were tough. You know, and, and, and you said to me, Mr. Administrator, I just feel like I'm in the sophomore slump. Okay? And I told you then that, no, sir, you weren't. You were doing an outstanding job. I'm going to tell you, sir, four years later, you're a Hall of Famer in my book. <laughs> and I thank you for all that you've done. Mr. Chairman, if you'll join me for just a second down here, I've got something I'd like to give you, sir. Mr. Chairman says, uh, presented to Robert W. Pickens, Jr., in appreciation of effective and dedicated leadership as Chairman 2021 through 2022, presented as 22nd day of November 2022, of the County Board of County Commissioners. And what I would like to add to that, and also to all the staff of the Board of County Commissioners, thank you for everything that you do for us. Well, I'm slightly overwhelmed. Um, I figured I would get a plaque or a gavel. Um, but the things that were said, I'm not easily come to a tear other than if it was my grandchildren or something like that, uh, but I did. Um, I am truly grateful. Um, each year that um, I've been a commissioner has been a challenge. Um, commissioners, you all know, and you're about to find out. From budget to retaining employees to uh, taking care of citizens' requests, it, it is a challenge. And I want to say for the commission, I truly enjoy working with you every day. I'm proud to be part of this commission. Administrator Suggs, um, thank you and for your team, the executive team, uh, and all the uh, employees of Putnam County. And you see it, we see it every day because um, we're interacting with them. Um, but when you go to uh, the EOC and see the uh, transformation of uh, employees switching roles to fill a role out of the EOC and how well um, safety director uh, J.R. Grimes and Fire Chief Chad Hutchinson and um, Stefan and Danielle took care of those two back-to-back -back storms um, that created a lot of havoc in Putnam County. You just see that we have a lot of uh, stars in Putnam County. 
I'm just proud to, to be part of the team, as I'll say in closing. Thank you very much, and I am I'm truly honored. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we'll go ahead and get to the business at hand, and that is the business of electing a chairman and vice chair. Uh, commissioners, I have about four or five paragraphs I need to read here for the record, so if you bear with me for just a moment, then we'll open it up for nominations. As the moderator, I will open the floor for nominations. Nominations do not require a second. If only one name is placed in nomination for the moderator, the moderator will ask for a motion to close the nominations and to elect the nominee by acclamation. A second to the motion and a vote will follow. If more than one name is placed in the nomination, the moderator will ask for a, a motion to close nominations, a second to the motion and a vote will follow. The moderator will then ask for a show of hands in support of the nominees in order for which they were nominated. The moderator will acknowledge the newly elected chair and the same procedure will follow for the election of the vice chair. So at this time, Mr. Chairman, I will open up the floor for any nominations for chair. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to nominate Mr. Terry Turner for chairman of the Board of County Commission. We have a motion on the floor to nominate Commissioner Terry Turner for chair. Is there any other nominations? Move nominations to cease. Move nominations to cease. At this time, we'll go ahead and um, make the motion to nominate uh, by or approve by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. In the second for that motion, I, I apologize. I should have asked for a motion in the second. I make the motion to nominate Commissioner Turner as the chairman of the Board of County Commission. I'll Do we have second. a second? I'll second. Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And congratulations, Chairman Turner. <laughs> At this time, we will go ahead and we will uh, make a mo or ask for motions for vice chair. Mr. Moderator, I move that uh, Larry Harvey be vi uh, vice chairman. I have a motion on the floor for uh, uh, Commissioner Larry Harvey to serve as vice chair. Do we have any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close nominations and ask for a motion to appoint uh, Commissioner Larry Harvey vice chair by acclamation. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Welcome. And uh, look forward to serving both you, Chairman Turner, as well as you, uh, Vice Chair Harvey, for another year. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it is now your meeting, sir. Thank you. I'd like to uh, have a three-minute recess to start with. Thank you.
Thank you, Commissioners, uh, for the vote of confidence. Uh, we're going to uh, start to uh, move right into our planning and development portion of the meeting, which was actually slated on the agenda for 9.05, because it had to be that, or soon thereafter, it had to be that, because that's how it was advertised, but uh, we'll get to it at 10.21. <clears throat> our first item on the agenda is the Platt Vacation Resolution Number 2022-107. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, Joseph Searley, Planning and Development Services. Um, this is an application to vacate a portion of the Ridgedale Platt uh, recorded on April 22nd, 1927. Uh, the applicant is Kenneth Schwing. Uh, the location is the Ridgedale subdivision, uh, subdivision uh, located east of North Mooney Road, immediately west of the Palaka uh, Shopping Mall along Hudson Street. Uh, future land use is urban service and the zoning district is residential single family uh, R1A and residential R3. Uh, the original subdivision was platted for 408 lots, each lot 5,000 square feet, and recorded on April 22nd, 1927. Uh, the plot was consistent of uh, several streets that were never constructed, as well as uh, platted lots. In 1980, uh, Putnam County recorded an easement over several lots within blocks 31 and 32, providing ingress and egress to the plot come all. Um, uh, due to a wetlands and stormwater management facilities further uh, east in the plot uh, uh, mall parcel. Uh, here is the, an outline of the Ridgedale subdivision. As you know, the applicant has only um, uh, requested to vacate a portion to the north. Um, here is the actual plot. As you can see, the second street down, Hudson Street, was originally platted to run east and west horizontally. Uh, here is the outline of the lots and portions of roadways to be vacated. Uh, those lots in blue are the ones to be vacated. And as you can see on this uh, map here, um, Hudson Street was, was plotted to go east-west. However, there's a portion of, uh, the, of Hudson that became an easement back in 1980 prior to subdivision regulations, which is why we did not replot this portion. However, Hudson Street will remain the same. Um, the applicant is proposing to remove approximately 65 lots. Uh, the proposal would vacate all streets and right-of-ways which have not become necessary for use by dedication or utilities. Um, if approved, the lots would become just acreage and subject to density requirements of the urban service future land use classification and further subject to the standards of the R1A and R3 zoning districts. Uh, the easement from Hudson Street extension would not be affected by this pot vacation. Um, staff has recommended approval of this item to the commissioners. Um, that concludes the presentation. I don't know if the applicant is here to answer questions, but staff is here. Any questions of staff at this time? Is the, uh, I have one. As I understand from talking to Heather yesterday, this will not affect the paved part of Hudson Road, correct? Correct. It to the back of the mall, it won't affect that at all? Not at all. Okay, and it can't be closed because of this flat vacation? Correct. We are not, uh, the applicant's not proposing to vacate that portion, the west portion of Hudson Street. The easement would have to be dissolved, so the underlying lots that were plotted underneath that easement of Hudson Street will be dissolved. However, the easement remains intact and would, I think, require an action. Say and wish to speak. I'll close the public hearing then. Oh, excuse me, is anybody else? 2-003, as described in our agenda packet of the Ridgehill Platted Subdivision. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, Rich, do we need to read the resolution by title only? You read the resolution, uh, sir. Would you like me to on page 22 of your packet? Mr. Chairman, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners for Putnam County vacating the recorded subdivision Platte and Roads case PV-22-003 by title only. Resolution 22-107. Is there any further uh, questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, next case is uh, item B on the agenda, which is a small scale land use amendment. Page 43 of your packet. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, there's a companion application for the rezoning. I believe it's item C, or the third item. I'm going to present both of these items together because they are companion applications. So there will be two motions at the end of the presentation. This is a future land use map amendment, uh, SM22-002, and rezoning 
REP 22-007. The application is to amend the future land use map and zoning maps. The applicant is Yeldon S. Hodge. The agent for Mr. Hodges is John Jenkins. Um, this is a 11.43 acre vacant parcel located at 751 State Road 207. Uh, the future land use map uh, request is to amend the future land use map from agriculture to rural center. And the rezoning request um, is to rezone from uh, agriculture to commercial uh, neighborhood C1. A little bit of background, 11.4 acre parcel is predominantly agriculture. Uh, the surrounding uses are predominantly agriculture with some commercial uh, land uses and zoning spread out sporadically along this portion of State Road 207. Uh, immediately uh, east uh, of the subject parcel is the St. John's Mini Storage, which is located across uh, 207. And there are uh, several other commercial land use and zoning commercial land use and zoning designations across the street there. Uh, the applicant is requesting to amend the future land use to rural center uh, to allow for a zoning amendment to the commer to commercial neighborhood or C1. The rural center land use classification is of least intense commercial land use classification, often catering to uh, development in rural areas of the county. Um, the C1 zoning classification is of least intense commercial zoning designation in the land development code catering to less, to less intense commercial uses. Here is an aerial of the 11.43 of acre parcel. Uh, to the south uh, is the antiquated subdivision Floral Park. Um, to, as you can see to the west, to the north is most predominantly agriculture. Uh, immediately to the east is the St. John's Mini Storage. As you can see, it's predominantly surrounded by agriculture land use. However, there is a portion to the east you're seeing that is rural residential and commercial land uses. Here is a zoning map showing the predominantly agricultural surrounding area with some sporadic PUD uh, rezoning and commercial zoning to the east. So the current future land use and zoning designations do not allow for commercial uses as requested in the application. Um, per policy A19383, rural center land use allows for neighborhood commercial uses and for section 4581 of the land development code, the C1 zoning designation allows for the requested use by right and aligns with the rural center land use. Um, this parcel is located in a portion of the corridor that has existing sporadic uh, commercial development on land for both agricultural, residential, and uh, commercial land uses. Um, the pattern of development along 207 uh, is, you know, predominantly is projected to be more commercial as it is a main corridor. Um, the applicant will be required to provide mitigation in the form of buffering of its, uh, from the surrounding residential uses. Additional perimeter buffering around parking areas would also be required. Um, the type of buffering will be required at the development review stage of the process. So the Planning Commission voted unanimously to approve both applications. So staff, staff is recommending approval of the request to amend the future land use map from agricultural to rural center, and also recommends approval of the zoning designation amendment from agricultural to C1. And that concludes my, present, concludes uh, my presentation. So, why, why would they have to buffer if they're between C1, rural center, and ag? Why would they have to buffer the residentials across the street that's clearly not used, but it's across the four-lane highway? Correct, and that buffer not would be required across the street there. But if there's surrounding residential uses, I think that the classification, if it's residential, the code requires incompatibility buffers, even though there is, that home could be a 1,000 feet away. It is a requirement of the code, but we would have to determine that at the development review stage, even if it is even necessary. Even the residential house that's in the area is also on an agricultural piece of property, so it's not residential to commercial. Well, it's residential to agriculture and row crop. Correct. And that would be just be determined. We'd have to determine those uses. If it was a residential <coughs> in nature, then, or more agricultural in nature, then probably a buffer would be required. Any other questions for staff at this time? Yeah, I have just one. Um, with this particular zoning C, that when it gets to the C, maybe I should ask it in the second part, but I'll go ahead and ask it now. Will they be able to have items stored outside of this building? I uh, don't. I don't believe in the C1 because it is a less, in, the less intense commercial uh, uh, zoning designation classification. So I don't know that outdoor storage, I believe that's commercial intensive and would require. I'm not sure, like 
you know, they're, they sell hunting and fishing supplies, which maybe get into maybe small boats and things like that. Would they be able to leave them outside? So overnight, I don't, I don't believe they would be able to leave them overnight continuously. However, if they wouldn't, I'm sure they could sell their goods and items outside and okay. see one. And then move them back inside. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Any other questions of staff at this time? I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition to this application? In opposition to a zoning application? Huh? Sorry I didn't hear you, Douglas. You're going to have to come to the microphone. My name is Douglas Hayes, 216 Huron Avenue. Uh, I just wanted to know what the intended use is of the property and the Anything that's allowed in C1 Rural Center. Okay. Well, I didn't know if they indicated what the, you know, is it going to be uh, a used tire store or is it going to be uh, anything, anything that's allowed in C1 Rural Center. Okay. That's, I mean, we can't come up here and say it's only for single use. That's against the law. So I just wondered if they had indicated a intended use. Uh, the second thing is that when there was application, the surrounding citizens, um, did they respond and what was their response? Well, I don't know if they responded to any of the planning. Did you have any citizens in the planning commission show up against or for? No, sir, we did not. Um, we also sent uh, advertise, or I'm sorry, a public notice out to all properties within 300 feet of the subject parcel. So surrounding parcels were notified Staff received no letters of opposition or emails or any correspondence. Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, that was a question I had for staff. When I first became a commissioner here, I was kind of told that we're not really supposed to know what's going on the property, just it fits into that zoning district. And I appreciate you saying that because it is important that we make decisions based on land, not on usage in, in some cases. So um, if, the, if it fits the land use, then it should fit the zoning, and that's what we do. So thank you for saying that, Mr. Chairman. Well, I guess I'm going to have to ask a legal question here. If I know what's, what the proposed use is, do I have to tell that as part of this presentation, or is that a, something that I, that I do not have to say? Because I know what is proposed to be there. It was actually in the package, which is part of the public record. So. It's entirely up to you. I'll tell you that. I think your first comment was really on point. It's not something that, personally, I would suggest that you make as part of your analytical decision-making process because even though a current property owner may have an intended use, I mean, think of how many times we've seen residential developments fall through, and then whoever purchases the property may have a different use, which is why, again, what you said was correct. Look at what the permitted uses by right are and not necessarily what one particular intention is, because that literally could change tomorrow. Okay. Well, I, I will make the comment on that, <clears throat> that having a rural center in C1 out there where you've got a, a mini-story warehouse across the street and a commercial that they could build a shopping center on just towards Hastings from that, I don't see any impact on this whatsoever for the area and especially with the Planning Commission unanimously taking it on both applications. But is there anybody else here that would like to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this application in our packet, that it's consistent with the comprehensive plan in LDC. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve. Uh, no, we're going to have to do these one at the time, even though they're tied together, I believe. Uh, so with that being said, the, uh, the first one, we have a re there wouldn't be a resolution on this, would there? Okay. Okay, so the motion how it's presented will be suitable. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, the uh, next one is the uh, following case, which is the same case that just goes for the rezoning on the same piece of land. Would Cheryl entertain a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of that rezoning application. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, 
And with that, we're going to move straight into presentations. Um, we're going, yes. Well, for this meeting so far, I don't think this is working well at all. So if you would just do as the old fashioned way and just kind of get my attention and I'll call on you. Uh, and then we'll try to get some of this fixed. Also, two of our monitors up here aren't working. So Commissioner Wilkinson was kind enough to let me kind of share her monitor during the presentation. So we'll, uh, we'll try to get some of that taken care of too, maybe before workshop if possible. Um, with that being said, uh, we're going to move into presentations. And number one is the uh, A is the first presentation, which is the uh, Georgia Pacific presentation. And I'm going to ask Commissioner Harvey if he would read that presentation for us this morning. I'm going to be down. At, is anybody here today that's from Georgia Pacific for this? Would you meet me at the uh, podium, please? Mr. Chairman, as you're making your way there in audience and fellow commissioners, um, you heard me in my remarks at my swearing in how important Hudson Pulp and Paper in Georgia Pacific is to my family. So it's an honor for me to be able to read this proclamation today. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Procl Putnam County Proclamation 2022-119, Georgia Pacific Plaque and Mill 75th Anniversary. Whereas George Pacific's pulp and paper mill first began operating in Putnam County on November 5th, 1947. And whereas since its operation began in 1947, the Georgia Pacific mill has provided generations of Putnam County residents with jobs and a steady source of income to enrich their lives. And whereas economically, the Georgia Pacific mill remains the largest private employer in Putnam County employing nearly 1,000 employees plus an additional 2,426 indirect jobs in the community with an economic impact of more than $1 billion annually. And whereas Georgia Pacific generally, generously contributes and participates in numerous community organizations such as the Education Foundation of Putnam County, United Way of St. John's Putnam, Putnam Habitat for Humanity, Red Heber's Boys Ranch, The Ark, the Putnam County Chamber of Commerce, and many other worldwide worthwhile efforts. And whereas George Pacific endeavors in Putnam County education system has been substantial with programs such as the teacher and school related employees of the year awards, all county sports and athletic awards, and many grants. And whereas George Pacific scholarship program for children of their employees has enabled numerous high school graduates to continue their education. And whereas George Pacific has, a, has had a positive impact on the quality of life for all Putnam County citizens. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed this 22nd day of November 2022 that the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners hereby recognizes and congratulates Georgia Pacific in its 75th anniversary of business operations in Putnam County and extends its best wishes for continued success in all future endeavors done, ordered, and adopted this 22nd day of November 22, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I move aesthetically approval of this proclamation. We have a motion and a second by Commissioner Pickens, uh, by Ms. Wilkinson, I'm sorry. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Approved, ayes have it. say a brief um, word of thanks to the Commission for uh, recognizing the mill they're they're super excited about the anniversary and um, and working to serve the community for another 75 years so uh, thank you for your commitment to the community and, and um, thank you for this thank you absolutely
Okay. We're going to uh, continue with presentations, and we're going to ask Ms. Stella Brown to come forward with the One Book, One Putnam Committee. Good morning to each of you. We come to this morning once again with our annual book for One Book, One Putnam. And I'm going to challenge the commissioners. They have nothing to do with this, so y'all have to fault me. We have a book discussion at each library in Putnam County. I challenge each commissioner to head up that book discussion this coming year. <laughs> Total silence. <laughs> Um, Steve and Bob Lee will um, discuss what that book is. They will also be giving each commissioner a copy of that book. The book is The Burning Sky by Tom Young. And I hope y'all enjoy it, and I hope y'all participate in all the events throughout Putnam County pertaining to this book, the finale, the kickoff, and the book discussions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Stella. Mr. Crowley, I know you want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner, we have been doing this too long together. <laughs> I appreciate that, and I appreciate all of you. And Ms. Wilkinson, welcome to the County Commission and uh, the joy. And Mr. Harvey, congratulations on another term. And the rest of you, just congratulations for being here. We appreciate you an awful lot. This is the 19th or 20th. This is the 19th year we've had the opportunity to promote reading in Putnam County. And as one of your predecessors often said, it's a great day to be in Putnam County. And whenever we can encourage people to read in Putnam County, it's a great day. And that's what we're all about. As Bob Lee said in the newspaper article, if we can get every resident of Putnam County to read at least one book a year, we have done great things. So we encourage you to help us do this reading. Uh, this year, as Stella said, this year's book is Red Burning Sky by Tom Young. And this is somewhat of a departure from books that we have chosen. For the last few years, we've sort of looked at Florida or the South. This is a very personal kind of story about World War II, about an effort to airlift hundreds of downed pilots out of Yugoslavia and get them back to safety in Great Britain and England. And it's, just, it's a story of heroism. It's a story of overcoming challenges. It's a story, there's a little bit of love and romance in it. But it's a story of courage and conviction and a story of redemption. And I think that's a story that speaks well to us today, that we need courage, we need redemption, and this is one way to look at it. Um, the people standing behind me are the heart and soul of one book, one Putnam. Uh, Joyce Oliver, Lula Gale Griffiths, um, Helen Muir, and Bob Lee. Um, Yvonne Parrish can't be with us, and Roberta Crisson is, oddly enough, I believe either yesterday or today, visiting the World War II Museum in New Orleans. I think she's going to stuff some artifacts into her, <laughs> no, no, please not, I would not encourage that kind of thing. I just encourage you all, our kickoff will be coming up in January at the Palatka Golf Club, and our plans are still a little nebulous about that. And we will be so, I have a little bird that speaks to me occasionally. I, I think, I think it is, uh, that we will be celebrating and honoring some of our military veterans, particularly our World War II veterans who are becoming fewer and far between. That is just unfortunately a nature of time. But this will give us an opportunity to recognize their service to all of us. So I encourage you to read the book. As Stella said, we are 
challenging you to read it, and we're challenging you to lead one of the book discussions. That is, it is neat to see our elected officials involved in the community in supporting literacy and reading. As I am fond of saying, reading rocks. So we appreciate you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for supporting One Book, One Putnam, and look forward to seeing you at some of our events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members like to speak? Bob, Abigail, George, anybody, anybody? Okay. I would just like to say you can call me and tell me what date you would like to leave that book discussion. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know my email and you know my location. Okay, thank, thank you, you Miss Stella. Would y'all please come up here and stand in front of the dais, and we'll stand up here where we can get everybody fit in and have take a picture. I'm gonna say I don't think you've read the proclamation. Well, I will as soon as we're done. Sorry about that, Stephen. But I need. I've been the first to admit I need supervision. So thank, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Before y'all go sit down, uh, <clears throat> I skipped that step. Thank you, uh, Mr. Crowley, for helping me. Uh, Commissioner Adams Act is going to read the proclamation and we, where we can pass the proclamation. So, Putnam Adams. County Proclamation Number 2022-109. One book, one Putnam 2023. Putnam County Read Red. Red Burning Sky by Tom Young. Whereas reading is an important activity for all the residents of Putnam County and Whereas less than half of the adult population of Putnam County now reads literature, the Board of Commissioners wishes to encourage all of the county's residents, both young and old, to read. And whereas reading is one, of the, one way to create bonds within a family and among friends and neighbors, we want to get everyone in the community from high school youth and office workers to public officials and senior citizens to read and discuss a great book together. And whereas one book, one Putnam is encouraging all residents to read Tom Young's Red Burning Sky, a World War II novel inspired by the greatest aviation rescue in the history. A book celebrating the steadfast bravery of our United States soldiers during World War II. And whereas this program aims to revive literary reading in Putnam County, therefore in support of this goal there will be a book discussions, community activities, knowledgeable speakers. And whereas the Board of Commissioners knows the residents of Putnam County will benefit and learn from reading this book, and whereas One Book, One Putnam is celebrating 19 years of encouraging reading throughout Putnam County, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Putnam County Board of Commissioners does hereby support learning through reading as promoted by One Book, One Putnam and proclaims January and February 2023 as One Book, One Putnam County Read Months. Done, ordered, and adopted on 22nd day of November 2022. So moved. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further? Comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. You know I can cook something if you need something cooked. That's not a problem. I heard rumors you could cook. I can. And people can eat. <laughs> okay. Mr. Pickens, were you able to find this out of there? John, the reference. I can I can put it off another couple if we're thinking she might make it. Yeah, not a, not an issue. I will do that. Um, so next we'll ask uh, Director J.R. Grimes to come forward, please. And all the staff. And all the staff, come on up. Come on, guys, don't be bashful. Come on up, Gene. Come on. Put you on the spot, didn't it? <laughs> Come on in. All right, good, good morning, Commissioner.
commissioners, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, everybody in attendance, and thank you for our staff uh, that were here this morning. Um, today's a day that you never want to do um, when you had to replace one of your team members. Um, when I first accepted the job, I made a trip to Lake Como, and I, I talked to Chad, and I said, please just tell me that you'll at least apply for the job. And he did that. Um, and he truly shined in the interviews, and we elected a true leader. And that's really tough to find sometimes, is just a true leader. Um, every time I needed something, I had people sitting right here beside me. Uh, Chief Hutchinson was one of them. That you could go, I need to get this done. He goes, I've already finished it. It's all good. You know, when we went through the storms, it was already done. You know, and it's really, really, truly hard to find a true leader. And when they define a true leader, they make a few of them. And Chad is one of the few leaders that we can have inside of our community. He served us for, I don't want to tell him how old he is because he aged better than I did, but he served us for about 30 years um, on and off. Um, he started as a volunteer at the Satsuma Fire Station. He left and went to Central Florida and worked for a few years, and then he came back. He went up through the ranks of battalion chief. He retired from the county. Um, then, and I knew he was being an important fixture in putting our team back together here, um, and he's done a phenomenal job. He has an opportunity out in front of him um, that he can prosper and, and, and move up in life, and I'm so tickled to death for him when he told me he was leaving. I told him I'm proud of him, um, that he had moved up and he had been able to make these decisions that he was done, and I'm tickled to death. Um, I'm going to miss him greatly. Um, we have a tough person of our team to replace, but I couldn't say enough positive words about him today. Um, our staff, we're going to look for a, a replacement. It's going to be a hard decision, but we'll do the best we can with what we have. So um, with that being said, I'd like to present um, Chief Hutchinson with a, uh, an ax in retirement that some of his staff has gotten him. Um, so if he would step forward, wow. please. Wow, that's beautiful. And this is an um, ax presented to Chief Hutchinson for his many years of service uh, to the citizens of Putnam County, and we truly wish him the absolute best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as you guys know, I've had a passion for this department for a long time, and uh, this is my 35th year. Thank you. Chad. Real quick, I, I would be remiss as the union president to not step up and, and talk about our chief. Um, from a 19-year-old man working here, uh, first job in fire rescue. Had him there to show us the ropes and just moving up the chain as all of us have done. Uh, he's been there to be an, uh, an established fixture for us and, and a steadfast leader. Uh, it's been my honor to serve under him. Uh, the testament of the people here, you heard the pagers going off or we'd have more, but it's a busy day out there. Um, honestly, it's my fifth chief I've worked under. It's been my best. Uh, he's going to be hard to replace, and I know Director Grimes has a, a tough road to hoe ahead of him to try to fill these shoes. So. As a young man that, that learned and, and grew under him and, and got confidence in the job that I'm, I'm a quarter of what he is in, uh, it's been an honor to serve him. So definitely 35 years ain't enough time. Thank you. Thank you, Nat. I just uh, go ahead, Clue. Hey, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come up here and, and talk about uh, Chad Hutchins, the fire chief. So since taking the position of chief over the last two years, Chief Hutchinson has been a great asset to this department. I believe he is the most popular chief that we've had and the most light chief that Putnam County has had. His dedication, sacrifice, and commitment, commitment for the love of the job will never be uh, forgotten. He has a heart of passion and concern for all members, and he has done so much over the last two years, you know, established the emergency operations team that the county so badly needs. <coughs> He's added stations, personnel, new apparatus. He's helped with the new communication centers, and not only that, with, but with Director Grimes led the department during the two hurricanes that were mentioned here earlier today. His years of service of Putnam County of 35 it should be an example to the others. Just one thing I found out working with uh, Chief Hutchinson and working for him is that someone is going to have to fill some pretty big shoes when he's gone. Many chiefs come and go, and there are a few great ones, but they're probably the greatest one of them is Chief Jeff Hutchinson, and thank you for your service. One of the best things about being chairman is that I get to go first. <laughs> Chad, I 
haven't been any more so excited for anybody that's joined Putnam County's team since you did when you came back from retirement. And it was not disappointing. It was actually much better than even I thought it would be. You and JR and, and your team have taken that and turned it around to a big extent. And I know it's always a work in progress, but you guys have done a fine job. And, uh, and I hate losing one of the good guys in our team, and that's what we're doing. But uh, thank you for your service, Captain. Yes, sir. Chief. Uh, Mr. Pickens. Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, um, I'll start with my comments about many of the young men that are up here, my favorite young men, and uh, J.R. and Chad, you're two of them. Uh, John, uh, Paul, you're a little older, uh, but our boys did. My wife taught you in school, but... Our boys played baseball together all the way through high school. But I watched these young men grow up. Chad actually worked for me when he was in high school at my store. And I knew he had a passion for firefighting and, and service such as that. Um, but to be able to, when you came back and JR took over, um, to be able to work with you two young men at the EOC during these last two storms and to see your professionalism, and your experience and intelligence uh, used out there with your whole staff was very special to me as a county commissioner, but more so as a citizen and a friend of each one of yours and your, and your parents. So, Chad, I wish you well. I told you I'd offer any help I can as you're going into the private sector because I've been in it for 42 years. And, um, but I'm looking forward to, to what you'll do um, in your next endeavor. And thank you so much uh, for your service to Putnam County. And I did say, I did say at the pre-agenda meeting, I said, I guess when Chad gets home and his wife says, well, what'd you do at the job today? He said, well, I got axed. But I guess, <laughs> I guess it was a good axed. So anyway, congratulations. Um, Mr. Sugg, Administrator Sugg, did you have your light on? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, it's, Chad, thank you. It ju just simply thank you. Uh, we've had more than one conversation in my office. The first one wasn't real good. And, uh, you know, and, and I understood why. I really did. And so, uh, you know, but that follow-up conversation, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of good things here. Uh, we, you know, thanks to uh, Chairman Turner. I'll give him a little credit here this morning. We put that fire community together. You know, JR coming over, you coming back, this team that you folks have assembled here, you know, the, the trials and tribulations that we were going through three years ago, we don't have them today. And it's because of leadership. And it's because of you folks. And it goes all the way down that line, you know, and, and how you guys are supportive of each other and working with each other and recruiting fellow, com, you know, folks to come and work with you. Uh, but that's a testament to, to how you folks have turned things around there. And uh, it's a sad day for, for me and here, uh, us here in Putnam County. But... I want to join in with everybody telling you what a pleasure it's been uh, to work with uh, a professional such as yourself, and I wish you nothing but great, great things to come. And uh, please, don't be a stranger. Uh, we're going to still need, need some help. And, uh, you know, and, and I just want you to just be happy and uh, you know, know that you're loved. Thank you, for, thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Uh, will you all please come up here? And, oh, sorry. Uh, Commissioner Harvey first, I'm sorry. A few weeks ago when I got the email, usually I respond pretty quick. And in this case, Chief, I didn't. It took me a few days to kind of swallow that lump. And because you meant a lot to me. <coughs> you probably, no, nobody in this room probably knows, that, but you and I, that back in 2014 when I was laid up on my sofa with cancer surgery, you came out and visited me many times and sat there and talked to me. As a, as a servant of the people. And you gave me advice on things that I needed to know. And I never forgot all that. Never forgot your compassion when I was laying there because you know how hard it is for me to lay around. That's not something I want to do. But I got the email and I responded. And I responded that you're going to do great things in life and you've done a great job here. And coming back proved to me the kind of man you are is to come back, assume the position, and grow the position, and welcome more people on. So in your future endeavors, 
the only advice I can give you from the small business owner that I was for years, run with that ball chasing you downhill. It's well worth it at the end of the day. Congratulations, and I'll be praying for you, my friend. Thank you. Mr. Adams, uh, Ted, I just want to say that of every dealing I've ever had with you, it was with honesty and integrity, and I appreciate that more than you understand. I think you're going to be extremely successful out in the other world, we'll call it, um, because you're, I, I believe you'll run your business in that way, and that's two of the key things. And I really appreciate, even when it was things that maybe I didn't want to hear or people didn't want to hear, you always stated them as fact and the way that they were. And if they were opinion, you stated them that way as well. So your honesty and integrity, I pray to God that whoever follows in your footsteps, that they carry that same honesty and integrity because that's one of the most important things for your people as well as us in the position that you filled. And thank you very much for your time here. Thank you, Mr. Sheila, for sharing with you. So my first day and your last day. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, I haven't had the privilege of working with you, but I certainly know of your stellar reputation you have throughout the community. And Putnam County has been better served for you being in the position you've been. So thank you for your service and thank you for being for for um, for your 30, 30 years or 35? 35 years of service. Thank you. If you all would have come join in front of the dais right here and where we can get a picture of everybody. And JR, please stand in front of Commissioner Harvey. He's the only one that can see over your head. <laughs> Okay, we're going to uh, move uh, back up the agenda to item B, um, and I'm going to ask Commissioner Pickens to read the proclamation for the National Hospice Palliative Care Month. Go down front. Rodney, you want to come up front as Rodney Phillips? Thank you for coming in on uh, a short notice. Um, so we thought it was schedules or we missed something somewhere. That's okay. Um, Putnam County Proclamation number 2022-120, National Hospice and Palliative Care Month, November 2022. Whereas for 40 years, community hospice and palliative care have helped provide comfort and dignity to thousands of people in North Florida, allowing them to live their last months, weeks, or days comfortably with the people they love. Whereas community hospice and palliative care utilize an interdisciplinary and team oriented approach to treatment, including expert medical care, quality symptom control, comprehensive pain management as a foundation of care. Whereas beyond providing physical treatment, community hospice and palliative care attends to the patient's emotional, spiritual, and family needs and provides family services like respite care and bereavement counseling. Whereas community hospice and palliative care provides community-based palliative care, which delivers exper expertise to improve quality of life and, and relief from pain and can be provided at any time during an illness. Whereas in an increasingly fragmented and broken healthcare system, hospice is one of the few sectors that demonstrates how healthcare can and should work at its best for its patients. Whereas every year, 1.5 million Americans living with long-term, long life-limiting illness and their families receive care from the nation's hospice programs and communities throughout the United States, including community hospice and palliative care. Whereas community hospice and palliative care is an advocate and educator about advanced care, planning that helps individuals make decisions about their, the care that they want. Whereas the Centers for Medical and Medicaid 
uh, services have pledged to put patients first in all of its programs, including hospice, ensuring a coordinated and patient-led approach to care, protecting patients' choice and access to individualized service based on a patient's unique care needs and wishes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Putnam County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim November 2022 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life, discuss their end of life wishes with their families, and observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. Done, ordered, and adopted this 22nd day of November 2022. Mr. Chairman, I move we adopt this proclamation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, and we're going to move down the agenda to item E, the uh, countywide project update by Deputy Administrator <coughs> Daniel. Thank you, Chairman. Pat. Would you, uh, would the Commission like a five minute break? <laughs> yeah, let's take a five minute break before we do that, Ms. Young.
morning's update is not intended to be an all-inclusive list of every project or initiative underway by county departments, but a list of those most important to our citizens, our administration, and or our commission. We will begin this morning with the port project by administration. The barge port feasibility study conducted by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is in progress with an estimated completion date of July of 2024. A consultant composed the economic report to reinforce the feasibility study is pending submission to the courts. The final draft is being reviewed and tweaked by the consultant, the Army Corps economics and staff. The application for the Port Infrastructure Development Program grant with the United States Maritime Administration was approved for a grant of $353,000. Staff has sent, since met with the Maritime Administration's South Atlantic Director to discuss the project and the port's future. Staff has also been in contact with the USDOT Grants Management Supervisor regarding grant conditions and requirements. Staff has also developed and submitted a grant application for the State's Department of Economic Opportunity Rural Infrastructure Fund Grant Program to supplement the federal funds sought to finance an extensive and comprehensive report for the Port Development Plan. The Animal Control Facility, RFP 2238, was issued on September 27th to solicit proposals from qualified design build firms. The evaluation team will be hearing presentations from the four firms that responded to the RFP for design build of the animal facility on November 29th. Following the presentations on November 29th, the evaluation team will hold a final evaluation meeting for the purpose of establishing a rank order of the proposing firms. The rank order is tentatively scheduled to be presented to the BOCC at the December 13th meeting. If approved as recommended, contract negotiations will begin in rank order. Emergency Services has the ISO rating uh, countywide going on. On September 20th, we had the ISO on-site survey completed. Expect to receive results from the countywide ISO rating in approximately six months. Information Technology has several projects ongoing. The phone system E911 caller ID updates are in progress. Networking is working to update the E911 addresses and caller IDs for the phone system. The project is ongoing. The network security assessment is in progress. Networking on the comprehensive assessment for our network and potential security issues is ongoing. The Smart Cop Map project is nearing completion. The Putnam County Sheriff's Office has begun beta testing the new maps in the field. Once they are satisfied, the runtime content will be distributed to all users. The Nutanix cluster is nearing completion. Data migration is underway. The Georgetown uh, Park update, Parks and Recreation Division, the conceptual drawings along with suggestions for completing certain requirements of the grant with the Florida Communities Trust will be present, has been presented to departmental staff. The consultants from UF are finalizing the documents. Once, once received, staff expects to present the information in January at a workshop for BOCC review and direction. Parks and Recreation also has the Flora Home Park Historic Building project underway. The electrical and lighting fixtures will be installed at the end of this week. The power will be turned on. The flooring is scheduled to be installed the week of December 19th. The kitchen cabinets will be installed after the new year. In 2023, Palmetto Hall will celebrate its 100th birthday, and it is the plan of the Flora Home Historic Society, with assistance by the county, to be finally able to celebrate the grand opening of the beautiful historic building. Parks and Recreation also has the Pickleball Project at Triangle Park. The Pickleball Project is moving forward with an estimated start date the end of November. The Public Works Division has the Port Gates Ferry Landing Project. The fabrication of the metal ramp is complete. The installation of the ramp has been delayed due to the recent storms and the anticipated date of completion has not yet been determined. St. John's Avenue resurfacing Palm Avenue CSX crossing at the Flacco Fire Station. The anticipated advertisement date for construction has been moved to January to allow city, the city to complete the water main imp improvements in the area. County Road 310 Bridge Rehabilitation Project. The advertisement for construction services has been published and bids are due back November 30th, 2022. Septic to sewer conversion phase three. The contractor has obtained the materials to begin the construction activity. The anticipated date of completion is February 2023. Dirt to pave 2021. Paving activities on Park, Whitehall, Nancy, Lloyd, Lynn, Ida, Dixon, Sandy, North Lake George Drive, South Lake George Drive, Palm, and Atkins are complete. Norwood, Tropic, Cypress, Walt, Balsam, and Darren are expected to be completed and paved before the end of the year. Dirt to Pave 2022, RFQ documents to design services are complete and staff anticipates advertising before the end of this month. East Putnam drainage and flooding mitigation phases one through four. Phase three construction activities are underway and anticipated to be completed by the end of this month. Phase four permitting and design activities are underway. 
St. John's Avenue drainage improvements, State Road 19 to County Road 309C. The notice to proceed has been issued to the contractor and construction activities are scheduled to be completed in April of 2023. St. John's Avenue multi-use trail construction is anticipated to begin in September of 2023. South Palm sidewalk, Druid Street to Silver Lake Drive. The construction contract has been awarded and the pre-construction meeting is scheduled for next week. Saratoga Harbor drainage projects, Gibbs Avenue. Public Works is seeking proposal to complete the project using alternative means approved by the BOCC. James A. Long Elementary and Dingett's Middle School Safe Routes to School Project. 100% of the design plans have been approved by FDOT. The construction funding agreement from FDOT is on this morning's agenda for BOCC review and approval. County Road 315 resurfacing project. 60% of the design plans are under review and the final design is expected to be completed by February of 2023. Port Buena Vista Wastewater Treatment Plant Conversion and Sewer Main Extension. The executed funding agreement from St. John's River Water Management District was recently obtained to provide additional funding for the project. The advertisement for construction services has been posted and bids are due December 27th. Paradise Point Sewer Hardening System and Generator Installation. One bid was obtained to complete the project and coordination with FDEM is underway for additional funding considerations. County Ride Guardrail Installation Repairs and Replacements. The pre-construction meeting has been completed and activities are anticipated to be completed April of 2023. Countywide Road Resurfacing Project 2022. The contractor began resurfacing East Cracker Swamp Road last week. The anticipated date of completion for all roads is May of 2023. Countywide Striping Project. The contractor has completed the work and the final punch list items are being addressed. East Palaka Septic to Sewer Project Phase 4. Public Works is coordinating with the designer of the existing sewer infrastructure to obtain the required specifications to advertise this project. Countywide Bridge Repairs 2022. The pre-construction meeting has been completed and activities are anticipated to be completed by April of 2023. East Palaka Water Plant Retrofit Project. The project is underway. Barden Ranchette Road Resurfacing Project. Bids have been obtained to complete the project. Staff, staff anticipates presenting this item to the BOCC for discussion and award in December. San Mateo Water Expansion Project. One bid was obtained to complete the project. Staff is currently reviewing the response and anticipates presenting this item to the BOCC for discussion and award in December. Northern Putnam Drainage Project. The project involves drainage and roadway improvements along portions of Palmetto Bluff Road and Milliken. The funding agreement to complete the project is on this morning's consent agenda for review and approval. South Putnam Drain Project. The project includes drainage improvements near St. John's Fishing Lodge Road and County Road 309. The funding agreement to complete this project is on this morning's consent agenda for review and approval. That concludes this morning's project update. Yes, could I uh, make a uh, comment? Sure. Can you turn this into a two or three page report with double or triple the font size? I'm having issues without a magnifying glass. <laughs> I can do that, sir. Sometimes because this is such a quick report, um, I need to review it after the meeting and I said I'll need a magnifying glass. Yes, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a very comprehensive report, and it certainly answers a lot of my questions that I had coming in. But uh, could you give us an update on uh, West Fire Station? West Fire Station. Uh, West Putnam. Yeah, West yes, ma'am. I can briefly tell you that we got the legislative appropriation for $2 million, and staff is currently um, working with both design firms to look at that building as well as identify a location that fits within the parameters of the area where we have the least coverage and would allow that area to be better served. Okay. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Julianne, this morning I asked you about that Norwood area. Did you get a response back from Mr. Rodriguez yet? Not at this time, but I'm going to get the details on Norwood for you and get you the updated uh, detailed plan on paving that road. Okay. Commissioners, what we have is we have a contractor that's got everything ready, but they're just not putting asphalt down for whatever reason, asked for an extension, and uh, Mr. Nimitz felt like that wasn't necessary from, if I'm not speaking out of turn, but we got to get this thing moving on, and this contractor needs to get these roads done that he's been doing. I'll just leave it like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. May I ask, is it the same contractor that we were having the issues with out off Carlin? Yes, sir. I'm assuming y'all have something in the works to talk to them about. Yes, sir. We'll leave it there for now, then. Yes. Um, 
on the fourth item, one, two, three, four, five, fifth item on the list of Georgetown Park. Yes, sir. Um, could we schedule that on a workshop sometime in like maybe the December workshop? I would like to have an update on it. On the only part that I want is whether or, whether or not they have the Parks and Rec Committee and Mr. Gerard, Gerard. David Gerard. Gerard has decided that it is or is not a proper place for a boat ramp. Because if it's not, or if we deem that it's not, then we need to not start holding money for some project that's never going to come to fruition. So maybe it needs to, we need to move far, harder on the other option, which is the DOT property up there at Dunn's Creek that we all talked about. And so I, I just, that, that was our first, our first shot at it was we had agreed as a board, we had agreed that we'd try to do Crescent City at the Georgetown Park if it was able. But I'm understanding the water's real shallow there and that there's some wetlands we'd have to mitigate and some different things. It may not be a viable option, I just don't know. And if it's not, we don't need to be holding on to that money. We need to go on and try to press forward on the uh, DOT property off of Dunn's Creek, which is be, in my book, would be second to that one. Could we put, does that give you enough time, Commissioner Pickens, to have any additional? I don't, I don't think that's going to give it enough time. Can we see about doing it in, in January? Because we do have the report back from UF and ISIS, and we have that. Um, but I think we need to, like you say, drill down and see if it is feasible, um, you know, to do that and what will be involved in whether it's going to be dredge or something like so that. So we'll probably in January. Be shoving you too much if we did it the first meeting in January. I think we could probably get that put together. Well, yeah. If you need to put it off again, if you would contact staff, and we'll, we'll try to do, accommodate you. I just would like to. Uh, I'm ready to, to see it move forward, forward one exactly. way or the other. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Miss Young, for that, that report. Sir. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. But along on the Georgetown Park is one of the things that has been accomplished with this uh, new management plan is we'll be able to present that to the and community lands and trust to try to get back in compliance. So we need to do that whether we build a boat ramp or not. So I think we've got that in place. Um, Julianne, on the animal control shelter, so if I understood, um, the evaluation committee will review, re review the bids, okay, and then you'll select one and that'll come back to us on the uh, yes, first sir. meeting in, in December. The evaluation committee is already reviewing those uh, proposals. We received four, um, and then they, each of those four firms will make a presentation to that evaluation committee on November 29th next week. And then following those presentations, based on the proposals and the presentations, the evaluation committee will score them. They will give them a grade, and then we will present to you a rank order, so not just the top, but we will, we will put them in order of, of firms that the evaluation committee has um, graded to be of best value to the county in order. And then if the board approves um, the recommendation of the evaluation committee, staff will begin negotiating with that top ranked firm to determine if we can, uh, in fact, reach a mutually agreeable contract. Okay, then if we do approve, then the particular contract will move forward with designing a, a building um, Designing and and construction, construction activities of activities that animal control facility. Yes, sir. Okay. So with this, this project has been moving along slowly for a number of years, but this is where we're to the point where it is moving forward. We still have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Uh, set aside for this. The property has been selected. The borings yes, have been done. Yes. So this is the next step, and it's moving forward as fast as it can. Yes, sir. Okay. Because I had Miss Jenny Oakwood reach out to me. Um, about this, and there's a lot of citizens concern of where we're headed with this, but I think we're moving forward about as fast as we can. And I told her, I said, I can't speak for the whole commission. I said, but I do believe that each one of us, and I don't assume for Ms. Wilkinson, Commissioner Wilkinson, is that she would be for moving this forward. So I think we've got the board support. So, okay, yes, thank, thank you for the update. Yes, sir. Any other we move on? The lights aren't working this morning. So Somebody needs to kind of wave me down or, or like go and give me a little shock in the arm when Bill wants to speak over there. Uh, so good. Uh, we'll move forward with a public comment on agenda items. 
Uh, this portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It is not reasonable to expect the board will engage in debate or deliberation about matters on which the board has received no prior information. Please limit yourself to three minutes. Public comment cards are conveniently placed in the back of the meeting room, and, uh, and they don't have to be filled out. We would appreciate if they did. This is for agenda items only. Would you like to make a comment, Mr. Hayes? Okay, on about an agenda item. Okay, please come forward. Douglas Hayes, 216 Huron Avenue. In regards to the barge port project, as you're moving forward, perhaps it's time to get a department head or somebody to manage the project. It's still a point of contact as the county administrator and the grant writer. Not on our you guys are, are the. It's not on our agenda, Mr. Hayes. Uh, she was, when she gave the list of all the. Um, you mean the, what she's trying to accomplish? Yes. That's not on our agenda. She was giving us an update of what's going on in the county. So, wouldn't I be able to comment on the stuff that she listed? Yes, sir, at the end of the meeting under public comment. This is public comment for agenda items. Okay. This is not on that, the agenda. Today. The list that she gave off was the was on the agenda, was so up, I was that, commenting. That was an update on projects. Okay. Then um, the last thing would be in regards to um, that the uh, small scale land use amendment and the rezoning is that transparency um, when the applicant that's did not, give. That's not on our consent agenda either, Mr. Hayes. Okay. Perhaps I'm mistaken. Public comment on agenda items. Yes, so sir. I'm, I'm assuming. Consent agenda items. So it would be page two then is what you're referring to that yes, I would sir, be making a comment on. Agenda, yes, sir. Okay. So it's not on the stuff that you had just discussed. Already passed, you mean? Yeah. No, sir. Okay. But then I'll sit down and wait my turn. Yeah, Thank you. We, we'll do it at public comment when I have your card here when it's a yes. public comment on all items. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, comment on the consent agenda items? Okay. Seeing none, I'll close the uh, public comment on consent agenda, and I'll ask commissioners at this time uh, if they'd like to remove anything from the uh, consent agenda. Um, and I'll start with Commissioner Adams Act. Ida B. E. Commissioner Harvey? I have none, sir. Uh, Commissioner Wilkerson? I have none, sir. Uh, Commissioner uh, Pickens? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I have nothing further. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve items on the consent agenda, item A, B, C, D, F, G, H. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the consent agenda with the exception of E and I. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, Commissioner Adams, Act, item E. So, so I pulled item E just because I, I got several emails about item E, and I guess the concern people had was with um, what the school district's doing with closing schools and stuff in Jenkins Middle School being closed already. They're like, why are you paving? Why are you going to do that sidewalk? But I did send them the picture that we have, and obviously that sidewalk goes, serves that whole community all the way to James A. Long. I'm not sure where the district is going to put the new James A. Long or new whatever. Um, but in the meantime, it's going to be a few years. Even if it was only that time period, it's going to serve that community well. Um, I just wanted to, to note that for the public comment that people brought to me. Um, I do think this is a good idea. Um, there are several spots closer to that far end that are really bad. There's that little wooden bridge as well. Um, I drove that and walked that a couple times here when I was trying to deliberate what my thoughts were on the comments that I got. So I just wanted to put that out there for the people that had questions about why we're doing this. And, and I do believe the district is going to put a school somewhere along that path as well from conversations that I had. But obviously, none of that is in stone. So please. Okay. Okay. Now, Commissioner Wilkerson. Well, um, I appreciate uh, Paul's 
Commissioner Adams Act's comments, but I was sold on this whenever I saw that this was an accounting funded project and it was a Florida safe routes to school and it's money coming in from FDOT. So anything that we can get in, I'm all for getting in funds from the state and federal government to help improve our county. Well, thank you. Um, Commissioner Adams Act, would you like to make a motion to pass that? I make a motion that we pass item D. I mean second. E, sorry, E. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I just have a motion carries. Uh, Commissioner Pickens, item I. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a little history on this for Commissioner Wilkinson. Is this uh, vacation of this portion of Bass Drive was presented a couple years ago by Mr. Cartwright. And um, the day we were actually back in Zoom meetings in, so we were Zooming and there was some opposition, um, which was um, kind of a surprise. There was opposition there, so we did not move this forward. Uh, Mr. Cartwright decided to pull this. Um, until just a few months ago to where it, it came to the board again and was going to go to the public hearing process uh, for the same uh, ask of the vacation of this particular portion. And um, the county felt with um, our county attorney um, that it wasn't 100% clear who owned this strip of land, this road. Uh, so we were able to do title searches, which took a lot longer than we thought, so it came back that, um, that the county does own this. So I just want to make a statement that this is just to move this forward, to move it forward to the public um, process to where people would be notice, notified and noticed and that there would be a public hearing, I believe, on January 10th where citizens could come and speak for or against this. Uh, so I just wanted to make that clear, and there will be opposition um, for this vacation. So, and uh, if there's any questions, um, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so when the when we as a county obtain um, these kind of easements or right of ways, does the county pay public dollars for them? From what I understand, on this particular one that it was just dedicated to the public. It was dedicated would, through a plat? There are uh, instances where the county could pay for an easement, but in this particular, all research indicates that there were no monetary dollars that were um, spent in, in recording this easement. Okay, that's why I wanted to know. Thank you. When we discussed this at workshop, one of my questions at that time from the attorney was, could we declare this excess property and put it up for sale? Right. That's the um, it was not. It was not, we were not able to do that uh, by way of our attorney. He said that the only thing we could do is either keep it or vacate it because it was a flat for a platted uh, road for a, a subdivision that the county owned. So those I think, my, my, my preference would have been to declare it surplus, but we can't do that. So. Okay. Does that make total sense? Thank you. Okay. All right, with that, I'll make a motion that we um, Except uh, item I. Second. We have a motion and a second for item I. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I just have a motion carried unanimously. Okay, we're going to move down to uh, code enforcement for a fine reduction case number 2020-00514. Come on down, Mr. Moore. <laughs> The address is 1505 South State Road 19. The property owner is Yo Gonzalez. The violation was unsafe structure. The original fine amount was $13,412, and the total cost of enforcement action is $1,616. The property owner uh, is now compliant and requesting a fine reduction. If the board approves, we recommend the reduced fine to be paid within 90 days. Is there anyone here to speak on this? case. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing on that case and uh, ask for a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve staff, re staff recommendations, reduce the fine to $1,616 to be paid within 90 days. We have a motion and a second uh, to reduce to $1,616 to paid within 90 days. Is there any additional comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, next, we'll go to item number nine, Mr. Matt, Honorable Matt Reynolds. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I have um, nothing to bring to the board this morning other than to wish everybody a, a happy Thanksgiving this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Same to you and your family. Um, we'll go to appointments next, and we'll start with uh, Commissioner Pickens. I have none. Uh, Commissioner Wilkinson. I have none. Commissioner Adams Act. I have none. Commissioner Harvey. I have none. And I have none today. Okay. That being said, we'll uh, go to public comment on miscellaneous items. Um, same spill as before. Please hold your comments to three minutes. Um, and uh, Mr. Hayes. Douglas Hayes, 216 Huron Avenue. In regards to the animal shelter uh, that's in a design build format, to save as a cost savings, I'd like to point out that there's two separate factors. You have your administrative offices for the two leggers, and then you have the kennel situation for the four leggers. One way as a cost savings is the schools that are being uh, sold off and, and dismantled or whatever is for the administrative offices that they may have a school portable that we could use. And that way we could focus our revenues towards the kennels. And then at a later point in time, we could generate revenue to improve the administrative office. Um, as an example, one of the cost effective ways in kennel design, um, because the lack of allowance for citizen input, um, is called Greenspan or Luma Shield. It's the same thing that you make walk-in coolers. Um, it's a snap together function. Um, to alleviates a lot of structure and cost. If you go to um, the county fair, the FEMA building is a portable building made out of a Luma shield. And you, it's uh, roughly, I'd say probably 1,500 square foot. They put it up in three days, costs about 50,000 bucks. Uh, where the drawback is that has an actual canvas thermal uh, insulated roof versus uh, they also make an Luma shield roof design too. Okay, the next thing, um, now that you have new leadership and it's a new term, um, I'd like to point out that it'd be a good idea for a rebrand and make up your mind. We're uh, legislated as animal services, but they run around with animal control. But the mainstream of society is those are our family members. And if you look at Jacksonville, the largest no-kill shelter in the United States, or one of, it's animal services and rescue. Get it straight. Um, I've been telling you for almost six years now in regards to licensing, uh, education, and inform enforcement. Hypothetically, if we have 75,000 citizens in the, in the county, and let's say there's 60,000 dogs, at $5 per license, that's 300,000 revenue for operating costs. Since you have not made any decision to educate and enforce, we have a loss of almost a million and a half dollars of revenue operating costs. It would be a good time to go to our veterinarians and make it one-stop shopping. I actually went to brick and mortar to vaccinate my dogs with that idea, and they had no idea what I was talking about. Uh, the other thing, um, to educate you uh, as far as Mr. Harvey had uh, presented during a forum that we were a no-kill shelter. We're legislated as a kill shelter. We're a member of the No-Kill Shelter Coalition. I think that we need to legislate that we're a no-kill shelter. Um, it really doesn't change the price of coffee. The, the times that we euthanize are when they're extremely aggressive dogs and case scenario. Once again, it falls under the mainstream of society. Uh, the prisoner, the uh, location choice about to wrap it up, Douglas, you had yes, three minutes. The location choice was by the Citizens Advisory Board was a piece of property by Triangle Park where the leadership had chose to put it next to the jail with the idea that the prisoners might get some type of certification in the vet tech and veterinary assistant um, program with the idea to obtain employ employment. But if you've got a criminal background, you are not going to get certified. 
And even if you did on an employment basis, would a veterinarian want to hire somebody who has a, a criminal background that's going to be theft, abusive behavior, or drugs versus somebody that led a good life and got the certification? The best for the reduction of recidivism is horticulture. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. Um, we're going to uh, move down to the administrator's comments, county administrator's comments. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just again, just joining everybody and wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving this week, but we got a couple of things that we probably ought to uh, put on our radar for the, for the next meeting. And one of those is your December 27th meeting uh, and the date uh, that it falls the uh, day after the Christmas holiday. Uh, so it's been customary that you folks will make a decision of whether or not we're going to hold that meeting or not. We can discuss that at the next meeting and make a formal notification one way or the other on that. And secondly is... Will there be any advantage to you to do that today? It doesn't really matter if we do it today or next time. It would, it would be an advantage just to go ahead and let everybody know and make that decision so we can put the notice out that the uh, uh, Board of County Commissioners uh, will only hold one meeting. That would December. take a board motion and vote, wouldn't it, to just, uh, yes, sir. to just cancel the second meeting in December? Yes, sir, it would. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we cancel the second meeting in the, of the Board of County Commission meeting in December. We have a motion and a second to cancel the second meeting in December. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll update the calendars with, with that new information. And secondly, and the last thing that I have this morning is, uh, first of all, welcome uh, Commissioner Wilkinson to the dais. And, uh, you know, and thank you for the phone calls that I've, I've received so far, and I look forward to that communication continuing and uh, building that rapport. Uh, well, like I told you the other day, we're problem solvers and we can't solve them unless we know about them. So please continue uh, to reach out to us. That's, that's, uh, that would be outstanding. And uh, you, now that we do have a new elected commission, we've got a, a couple of vacancies on some committees that the former commissioner sat on. We'll get those. I've asked Laura to pull me a list of those committees so we can bring them to a workshop for discussion so we can look at who might want to fill those, those seats in the future. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Suggs, uh, next we're going to go to county attorney. Do you have anything to add today, Rich? Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that being said, like I said earlier in the day when it came to uh, Chief Hutchinson, it also gives me the opportunity to welcome the Odell as the first commissioner to the uh, to the dais, uh, congratulations on your election. We really look forward to working with you with your experience, knowledge, and what goes on in the state. And I think you're going to be a very well added addition to Commissioner Harvey, who works hard up there too whenever he gets that opportunity. So I, uh, I want to certainly welcome. I know it was a, an election that at times became very, un, very ugly and uncalled for. Um, so I'm glad you hung in there. I'm glad you kept Eugene out of jail. Uh, <laughs> but again, welcome to the commission. I look forward to serving with you. Um, and with that, I'm going to move commissioner comments to Commissioner Adams Act. Yeah, I'd like to welcome the Oda Wilkinson to the, our board as well. I um, congratulate you, Chairman and, and Vice Chair Harvey, on your new leadership positions. Um, Obviously, Chad has been a resource here for 35 plus years. He's an example of, of a local person that, that stayed with it. They need to leave for a little bit and come back. But uh, that's what we need more of here as far as our employees and that is people local as much as we can possibly get to recruit locally. I think that'll help in our, our retention and, and whatnot. And I think he's a great example of that and a, a true leader that we had. Um, I'm going to leave my comments at that. and. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I think it's going to be a blessed week, and, and hopefully the weather holds out through all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Adam Zach, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you want to echo welcome, Commissioner Wilkinson? I'm still used to it. Commissioner <coughs> Wilkinson. Okay, Commissioner Wilkinson. I said it on the radio this morning, so I, you would, I said it the first thing, so we're good to go. I do want to say uh, I've got a complaint from a Mrs. Thigpen over the weekend about some loud music at the fairgrounds. Um, I guess there was some applause.
party that moved from one location to another, but I don't know much about it, so if we can talk about it later and find out. That's not a problem. I had, uh, I had actually uh, reached out to uh, uh, President Dubo of the Fair Authority and talked to him, and they're actively working on They did hear the comments. They did hear the complaints from Ms. Thigpen and others, and uh, that they're trying to address it. They thought they had it addressed a few months ago, and we haven't had any issues from then until now. It just seemed like they were told that they couldn't play loud music after, I think it's 9.30 at night, but they just completely disregarded it and cranked it on up. So the, uh, the fair, the uh, J.R. Newbo uh, Jr. said that he is going to uh, take it to his committee to try and make some, to try to come up with some kind of a penalty or something if you violate those rules instead of just telling you that you can't do it. So they, the fair board is actively working on that as we speak. Thank you, thank you. Uh, today, um, something really neat is, is happening. Um, a few weeks ago during the storm, FPNL reached out to me and I had a concern. We were without power for 24 hours in our neighborhood. And you know, at 3.30 in the morning when you're filling up generators and you don't hear a whole lot going on out behind you, it was concerning to me. Uh, Clay Electric was our provider and they just had some trouble getting to that area where 183 homes were without power. I casually mentioned that to FPNL, Carol uh, Saviak, why, why she was on the phone with me that next day. She, FPNL reached out to our Rotary Club, gave us $1,000 to help feed those people in need. So we partnered with Crescent City Rotary. We partnered with Placa Sunrise Rotary. And yesterday I cooked 15 turkeys. So five will go south, five will go in Palak, and five will go in the West Putnam area. And it was kind of neat that we partnered with those three rotaries, but we also partnered with Enlarkin High School Culinary Arts Department. And they fix all the sides. So the three president, club presidents will be meeting at the high school at 3.30 today taking food south to Crescent City, taking food to Palaka to the Bread of Life, and taking food to the soup kitchen in Enlarkin to feed about 100 people at each location. So whenever we can leverage our, our abilities to, to reach out in the community, we should do that. But I just wanted to give a tip of the hat to the Enlarkin High School Culinary Arts Department and our fellow Rotarians, and a big shout out to Florida Power and Light for what they did. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my commissioners for voting me as vice chairman. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. Stay safe and enjoy your holidays. God bless. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey and Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, first, again, I'd like to welcome um, Commissioner Wilkinson and uh, look forward to serving with you. And um, your experience from your water management experience to private sector, real estate, to uh, Bobby Payne's uh, legislative assistant for the last uh, six years are going to be invaluable for Putnam County. Uh, surely believe that. Uh, Commissioner Turner and Commissioner Harvey, uh, congratulations on your new uh, positions. Uh, it was an honor to serve uh, again as chairman, um, and I truly pre appreciate the recognition. Um, speaking of recognition, I would like to just uh, mentioned Charles Overturf, Supervisor Elections, and his team. Um, I served on the canvassing board. I remember after my first meeting, um, Commissioner Harris uh, recommended to stay away from the canvassing board because of the time that it takes. Uh, we didn't have a recount, um, but there were many, many meetings, a seminar in Orlando, um, and then all the different meetings uh, that we had leading up to finalizing election results. Uh, but Charles runs a very professional um, department over there, and it was truly a pleasure to to interact and work with um, with those those people. And also, uh, Julianne's husband George is a board attorney, um, so we got to know him just a little bit better. And also Judge Morris, uh, who I grew up with in South Putnam. Another recognition I just like to mention uh, the West family, Ronnie and Judy West, who uh, lifelong residents of Crescent City. Uh, Judy uh, was an educator in Crescent City for 40 years, uh, which is a long time to, to be a teacher. 
but she just stepped down as city commissioner uh, last Monday when they swore in the new commissioners. Um, um, and giving back to the community as an educator, as a citizen, and as a, uh, an elected official. Um, and last but not least, it was very special to have my wife sworn in today for her second term and to have uh, Bewell there. Um, and today is my mother's 92nd birthday. So, Ms. Della Hill Pickens, I would like to wish you happy, happy birthday and wish you many more and just hope everybody has a, um, a very, very safe and happy Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, it's my favorite because you don't have to give presents. And you can just join in family and, and, and fellowship and just be thankful for everything. So that's all I got, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. Thank you. It's a great day to be in Putnam County for sure. Uh, a few things I want to mention. Uh, my replacement at Representative Bobby Payne's office is Shondell Goddard. Uh, she will be the new uh, local district aide eight here in Putnam County, and I think she'll serve that office well. She was here earlier along with um, his other aide uh, that's now in Marion County because he's now uh, has St. John's in Marion County in addition to Putnam and Clay. And uh, Shondell will do great. She'll be out in the community. So uh, when you see her, please welcome her to that new position. A couple of things that I wanted to mention that we have going on in the community. I know uh, usually Commissioner Adamsack brings up a few things. And he's always saying, if you can't find something to do, you're just not looking because there's plenty of things to do in Putnam County. Uh, the annual Christmas part, uh, Christmas parade is, of course, Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And so that starts down in downtown Palatka. We also have the Festival of Trees, which is um, at the Beck Chevrolet dealership, and they'll have 30 lit Christmas trees there. And it's actually, when you go down Reed Street, it's the only place that you're going to see those Christmas trees there. Um, lit up for the community and so that starts also uh, the day after Thanksgiving they'll start decorating them and then they'll sell tickets after that and uh, somebody will be getting a nice Christmas tree and Open Door Church of God is hosting a buy a tree change a life which is a Christmas tree event that serves to raise money for local charities in our community and uh, we tr usually try to get a tree from there every year and they all of their proceeds they give back to the community so thank them for doing that and we just have such big hearts here in Putnam County, and, and I just am so thankful that people are giving and